First of all, let me offer my obeisances at the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Siddhasarupa Nanda Paramahamsa and A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Namo Siddhasarupa Nanda Paramahamsa Namine. Gora Karuna Swarupaya Radha Krishna Prastayate. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine. Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschati Deskitarine. Vanta Kalpatribhyas Cha Kapasunubhya Eva Cha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavebya Namo Namaha Bhaja Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Sri Vas Hari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Bo Hare Bo Hare Bo I believe Bala is going to uh, is going to be showing pictures, various pictures of Lord Jagannath while while this pre-recorded story is going on. I hope you like it. I hope you find it uh, educational and intriguing and full of bhakti. Haribo. Bala. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimate Siddha Swarupananda Paramaham Saiti Namine I offer my humble obeisances at the lotus feet of Jagad Guru Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa, who is so very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter at his lotus feet. Bhaja Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Srivas Adi Gaur Bhaktivrindam all glories to Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, and all the devotees of Lord Gauranga Chaitanya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. O all attractive one, O all pleasurable Lord, O energy of the Lord, Kindly engage me in your loving service. The Story of Lord Jagannath's Appearance King Indrajumna was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu and was very eager to meet him face to face. At one time, by the Lord's arrangement, a devotee of the Lord arrived in the court of King Indrajumna. And, in the course of discussion, he began to talk about an incarnation of Lord Vishnu named Nila Madhava. After hearing these topics, King Indraduna became very inspired and sent different Brahmins, priests, in different directions to search for and inquire about Lord Nila Madhava. All of them, however, were unsuccessful and returned to the capital city of the king. Except for one priest, of the name Vidyapati. After wandering in many places, Vidyapati finally came to a district where the population was of the non-Aryan type called Sabara. There he took shelter in the house of a local of the name Vishvasu. When he arrived, the master of the house wasn't there, but his young daughter Lalita was there alone. In a short time, the master of the house returned and instructed his daughter to render all services needed for hospitality to the Brahmin guest. For some time, Vijapati stayed there, and later, by the special request of Vishvasu, he married his young daughter. While Vijapati lived in the house of the Sabara, he noticed some peculiarity in his host's behavior. Every night, the Sabara would go out, and on the next day, at about noon, he would return to the house, scented with various fragrances such as camphor, musk, and sandalwood. Vidyapati inquired from his wife about the reason for this, and she informed him that her father would go out to a secret place to worship Sri Nila Madhava. After that day, Vidyapati's joy knew no bounds. Actually, Lalita had been ordered by her father not to tell anyone about Sri Nila Madhava, but she overstepped that order by telling her husband. Vijapati became eager to see Sri Nila Madhava, and finally one day, by the repeated requests of his daughter, the Subhara Vishvasu bound the eyes of Vijapati and took him to see Sri Nila Madhava. 
As they were leaving, Vidyapati hid mustard seeds in his clothing. So, while passing along the path, he threw them down to mark the way. When they reached Sri Nila Madhava, the Sabara removed the blindfold. And Vidyapati, upon seeing the unprecedented beauty of the deity of Sri Nila Madhava, began to dance in ecstasy and offer prayers. Thus, Vidyapati personally witnessed the mercy of Sri Nila Madhava. After Vidyapati finished his prayers, the Subara kept him near the deity and went out to collect roots and forest flowers for worship. While the Subara was out, Vidyapati witnessed an astounding thing. A sleeping crow fell off a branch of a tree into a nearby lake and drowned. It immediately took a four-armed Vaikuntha, or spiritual form, and started back to the spiritual sky. Seeing this, the Brahmin climbed up the tree himself and was about to jump into the lake following the liberated crow. But as he was about to jump, a voice in the sky told him, O oh Brahmin, since you have been able to see Sri Mila Madhava, you should, before all else, inform King Indraduna. Thus, the Brahmin climbed down from the tree and waited. The Sabara soon returned, carrying forest flowers and roots, and started his daily worship of Lord Nila Madhava. As he was engaged in the service of the Lord, the Lord spoke to him, saying, I have for so many days accepted the simple forest flowers and roots offered to me by you. Now I desire the royal service offered to me by my devotee King Indrajumna. When Sabara heard this, he thought, I shall be cheated from the services of Sri Nila Madhava. Therefore, he bound his son-in-law Vijapati and kept him in his house. After a time, however, at the repeated request of his daughter, he freed the Brahmin and allowed him to go. The Brahmin then immediately went to King Indrajumna and informed him of his discovery. The king, in great ecstasy, went forth with many people to bring back Sri Nila Madhava. From the mustard seeds thrown along the path by Vidyapati, small plants had grown. And so, by following these plants, the king was able to trace the path to Sri Nila Madhava. When they reached the spot, however, they did not find it. Being able to see the beautiful form of the Lord, King Indrajumna besieged the village of the Sabara and arrested the Sabara named Visvasa. Suddenly, however, a voice in the sky said to the king, Release the Sabara. On top of Nila Hill you should construct a temple. There, as Daru Brahman or the Absolute Truth manifest in a wooden form, you will see me. You will not see me as Nila Madha. To build the temple, King Indrajumna made arrangements to bring stone from a place called Baulamala by building a road from there to Nila Kandara Hill. The holy abode of Sri Chetra or Puri is in the shape of a conch shell, and in the navel of that conch, the king established a town of the name Ramakrishnapura and constructed the temple. The temple extended 60 cubits beneath the earth and rose 120 cubits above the surface. At the top of the temple, the king built a kalasa, or round pinnacle, and on top of that, a chakra, or disc. He also had the temple decorated with golden ornamentations. Then King Indrajuna, desiring for Lord Brahma to consecrate the temple, traveled to Brahmaloka and spent a long time there waiting for him. During that time, the temple, which was very near the sea, became covered with sand from the shore. When King Indrajumna was away, first Saradev, then Galamadava took over as kings of that area. 
It was Galamadava who first raised the temple from within the sands where it had been buried for a long time. Shortly after the temple was uncovered, however, King Indrajumna returned from Lord Brahma's abode. Indrajumna claimed that he had constructed the temple, but Galamadava put forward the claim that he was its constructor. In a banyan tree near the temple, however, lived a Busandi crow who had been living through many ages, constantly singing the name of Lord Ram. From his abode on the branches of that banyan tree, the crow had seen the whole construction of the temple. Therefore, he made it known that actually King Indrajumna had constructed the temple and that in his absence it had been covered by sand. He further said that King Galamadava had concealed the truth. Lord Brahma then ordered him to reside outside the grounds of the temple on the western side of the lake called Indrajumna Saravara. King Indrajumna then prayed to Lord Brahma to consecrate the temple and the surrounding area known as Sri Chetra, which gives the highest type of liberation. But Lord Brahma said, This Sri Chetra is manifest by the Supreme Lord's own internal potency, and the Supreme Lord manifests himself. Therefore, it is not within my power to install the Lord there. Lord Jagannath and his abode are eternally situated in this material world by his own mercy. Therefore, I shall simply place a flag on top of the temple and give the blessing that anyone who from a distance sees this flag and bows down, offering his prostrated obeisances, shall easily become liberated. After some time, King Indrajumna became discouraged at so much delay in seeing Sri Mila Madhava. Deciding that his life was useless, he lay down on a bed of kusa grass, being determined to give up his life by fasting. At that time, Lord Jagannath spoke to him in a dream. My dear king, don't be anxious. I shall come floating in the sea in my wooden form as Daru Brahman, at the place called Dinikimuha. With a company of soldiers, the king then went to that place and saw on the shore a huge piece of wood marked with a conch, disc, club, and lotus flower. Although he engaged many men and elephants to move that Daru Brahman, or Woody Brahman, they could not even budge it. By that night, in a dream, Lord Jagannath again spoke to the king, saying, Bring my previous servant Vishvasu, who used to serve me as Nilamadava, and place a golden chariot in front of Daru Brahman. The king began to work according to the instruction of that dream. He brought the Subhara Vishvasu and put him on one side of Daru Brahman, and on the other side he put the Brahman Vidyapati. Placing a golden chariot before the Daru Brahman, he then started Kirtan, chanting the holy names of the Lord. Then the king caught hold of Daru Brahman and prayed for the Lord to mount the chariot. Daru Brahman was then easily placed on the chariot and taken to an appointed place on a raised platform of sacrifice. It is said that the place where the present temple stands is the place where the sacrifice was performed, and that the Nishringa deity now standing at the western side of the Mukti Mandapa in the temple compound is that original Nishringa deity. To carve the deity of Lord Jagannath from the Daru Brahman, King Indrajumna called many sculptors. None of them, however, was able to touch Daru Brahman for as soon as they started, their chisels broke and fell into pieces. Finally, the Supreme Lord himself came in the disguise of an old artist who introduced himself as Ananta Maharana. Some accounts say that it was actually Vishwakarma, the architect of the demigods, who Krishna sent as a carver. 
He promised that if he were allowed to work behind closed doors for 21 days, the deity would be carved. Immediately preparations were made. According to the old sculptor's descriptions, all the other artists were engaged in making three chariots. The old sculptor then took Daru Brahman into the temple and closed the doors. After making the king promise that the sculptor would reside alone and the king would not open the doors of the temple even slightly before the 21 days were up. After 14 days had passed, however, the king was unable to hear the sounds of the artistic tools, and so he became full of anxiety. Although his minister again and again forbade him, the king, on advice of his queen, by force opened the door of the temple with his own hands. Inside, the king did not find the old sculptor, but instead he saw that Daru Brahman was manifest in three forms, as Lord Jagannath, Subhadra, and Balaram. Going forward in front of these three deities, he saw that their fingers and toes were unfinished. The king's wise minister then informed him that the architect was none other than Lord Jagannath himself and that because the king had broken his promise by opening the doors seven days too soon, Lord Jagannath had manifest himself in that way. Then the king, thinking himself to be a great offender, decided to end his life. Thus, again, he lay on a bed of kusa grass and began fasting. When half the night had passed, Lord Jagannath appeared to the king in his dreams. The Lord said, I am eternally situated here, in Nilakala, in the form of Lord Jagannath as Daru Brahman. In this material world, I descend in twenty-four deity incarnations with my abode. I have no material hands or feet, but with my transcendental senses, I accept all the items offered in service by my devotees. And for the benefit of the world, I move from one place to another. You have broken your promise, but that is just part of the sweetness of my pastime. To manifest this Jagannath form, which protects the eternal words of the Vedas. Anyway, those devotees whose eyes are smeared with the salve of love, will always see me as Shamshundar, holding a flute, if you desire to serve me in opulence, then from time to time I may be decorated with hands and feet made of gold and silver. You should certainly know, however, that my limbs are the ornaments of all ornaments. From the Svetasvatara Upanishad Apani pado javano grahita pasyati Akakshu shashmuti akam masaveti bedyam nacha taisayati vetatam ahu agram purusham mahatma. The Vedas assert, especially in the Svetasvatara Upanishad, without legs and hands he moves and accepts, without eyes he sees, and without ears he hears. He knows all that is knowable but no one knows him. They call him the original Supreme Person. To protect this assertion of the Vedas, Lord Jagannath takes his form without hands and legs. Still, Lord Jagannath is able to accept 56 different types of food offered eight times daily, and he tours the world in his splendid carts. Hearing the words of Jagannath in his dream, the king became satisfied and prayed to him as follows. My Lord, grant that all who appear in the family of the sculptor who manifested your form may, age after age, assist in the constructing of the three carts. Lord Jagannath, slightly smiling, replied, That shall be. Then Lord Jagannath said to the king, 
the descendants of Vishvasu, who used to serve me as Nila Madhava, should generation after generation serve me. They may be called my Daitas. The descendants of Vidyapati, born from his Brahmin wife, should perform the deity worship for me. And his descendants born from his Sabari wife Lalita should cook my food. They shall be known as Suidras. King Indrajumna said to Lord Jagannath, My dear Lord, kindly grant one favor to me. Let the doors of your temple be closed for only three hours a day. The rest of the time, let the doors be open so that all residents of the universe may have access to see you. Further, let it be that all day long your eating may go on and that your lotus fingers may thus never become dry. Lord Jagannath replied, Tatastu, so be it. And for yourself, what benediction do you ask? Thus the merciful Lord Jagannath, Balaram and Subhadra appeared in this material world to benefit all living beings. What is the benefit they bestow? That is stated in the Narada Purana. Pratiman tatra tam dristva sayam nivena nirmitam ayanasena vajanti bhavanam me tatonach. The Supreme Lord Narayan tells Lakshmi Devi, In that great abode known as Purushottam Tetra, which is rarely achieved among all the three worlds, the Keshav deity who is fashioned by the Supreme Lord himself is situated. If men simply see that deity, they are easily able to come to my abode. In this way, Lord Jagannath is delivering the whole universe especially as he rides on his cart before the eyes of all. Ratha-yatra ki-chai! Ratha-yatra ki-jai! Well, that is the story of Lord Jagannath. Uh, I hope you found it as in, as informative and entertaining as I did. Uh, I put that together many years ago, and I thought it was I couldn't I couldn't imagine you know reading it to you and it being any more entertaining. So I thought it would be nice to play that for you. I hope you liked it. Um, now I'd like to relate to you another story that has to do with Lord Jagannath. Can everybody hear me okay? Am I loud enough? Yeah? Okay, good. Thumbs up. Great. Cool. Um, this is the, it's a, it's a rather short story of Dasya Buri. Dasya Bauri was an untouchable. He lived in abject poverty. But he was a great devotee of Lord Jagannath. So it has nothing to do with caste. Once people from his village were going to the Jagannath temple in Puri. Since Dasya Bauri was too poor to go along with them and had nothing to offer to the Lord anyway, he gave them the group, he gave them a coconut. And he requested that they offer this coconut to Lord Jagannath 
at the Aruna Stamba, outside of the main gate. The villagers simply laughed at his suggestion, but they said that they would do it. After that, every year, Dasya Bori would send a basket full of ripe mangoes to Lord Jagannath. The next day, the priests would discover only the seeds at the altar, certainly a sign that the Lord was accepting his loyal devotee's affection. One night, Dasya and his family had nothing to eat. Lord Jagannath appeared at the gate in disguise and asked Dasya's wife for food. His wife, Malati, could not find even a single bite to feed her hungry guest. Finally, after searching for some time, she managed to find a single grain of rice. And she offered it to the visitor. The guest accepted her offering and he declared that he was completely full and satisfied, thanked her and left. That night, the king of Puri had a dream and it was revealed to him that Dasya Bori and his family were all going to sleep hungry because there was not a single crumb of food in his house. Therefore, the king arranged for food to be sent every day to Dasya's home. And to this day, just after the bog is offered to the Divine Trinity, the very first offering is sent to the house of Dasya Bhauri. So, Lord Jagannath is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And we've been celebrating the Rati Atra now for the last four days. I hope you've had a chance to uh, engage in some of the activities uh, that they've had from Bhagavat and lectures by Acharya Das and so many worldwide kirtans. Uh, this program here is totally unique and amazing and wonderful. And I'm so happy that you are able to take part, uh, you know, as often as you do. Thank you so much. Now, are there any questions or comments? Now, come on, don't be shy. Yes, I'm bet. I understand uh, the Jagannath Puri temple is not open to non-Hindus. I know this is this is you know, Jagannath is so amazing. You know, uh, this is something that has been going on for many, 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 many hundreds of years, and. Um, I remember there was a devotee named Bihari Lal who was tall and skinny. And uh, one time when he was in Jagannath Puri, this is a, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada Siddhasaru. And he got someone, somehow or other, he got some shoe polish or something and got himself his skin all, you know, darkened his skin and made himself look kind of sort of like Indian and uh, and he tried to get into the Jagannath temple he managed to get in but after a while he was discovered and busted and kicked out of the temple <laughs> but but um, yeah it's you know so 
it, this is the, to me, this is the, the price that one exacts that Jagannath exacts for, you know, uh, to humble those of us who may think that we are qualified in some way because we're white or because we're, you know, because we are, uh, have, have some kind of privilege. You know, why can't we see Jagannath? Well, you can see Jagannath at the Ratiatra. You can dance before him. And, and you can see him in all of his glory as he, as he travels in his cart from one temple to the other. It's all there. So he's not, he's not closed off to everybody all the time. He's open to everyone at some time. He's open to everyone. But you're right, Ambet. They do not allow people that don't look Indian <laughs> to, to go and worship in the Jagannath Temple. So this is, uh, this is one of the very interesting and, and really kind of, you know, you're not the body instances and you're not American and you're not, you know, it's just like, wow. It's, a, it's such a trip to be able you, you you can stand outside. You can get the prashadam if you're lucky. It, it goes pretty fast. But, um, yeah, you're right. They don't allow non-Indians to go into the temple. <laughs> As if being Indian is some kind of qualification, you know. But that's the way it is. So, are there any other questions? Comments? Haribo, sir. Haribo, Daryl. Namaste. When, Namaste. Namaste. When Lord Jagannath appeared, <clears throat> did um, did uh, Baladev and um, and Subhadra did appear at the same time, or what, what's the? Well, story? like the story said, that uh, Vishwakarma carved. All three of them from the one the one log that they that they found that nobody could lift uh, until Vidyapati came and they and he was able to with the others they were able to lift it very very easily, but when they took it into the room where where the uh, old man who was Vishwakarma in disguise uh, you know said that he would he would carve Nila Nila Chal Nila Chala out of out of this log. Um, it turned out that, that he, uh, he carved all three of them. Do you know the story of, of, uh, you know, that this all happened in, um, in Dwarka, I believe it was, where, um, uh, Subhadra was, or one of Krishna's wives was speaking uh, yeah, one of Krishna's wives was speaking to another about the wonderful pastimes and glories of Krishna. And uh, Lord Krishna heard the, uh, the stories coming from, uh, from, he was standing under the window and he heard the, the stories happening. And then, and then, and he became struck and just like, just totally couldn't even move. And then Balaram came and he heard them and he became struck too. And then Subhadra, uh, she heard them and, 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 you know, they were, they were so uh, affected by these wonderful stories about Krishna that uh, their, their, their hands, their arms moved in like that. And they, and they, they, they almost took on the shape of the Jagannath Subhadra and Balaram that we the see in the temple. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so they, they all appeared at the same time um, uh, because of the impatience of uh, Indra, Indra Yumna's uh, wife uh, in the uh, uh, pastime, in this pastime that, that, uh, that this, that this, that this uh, particular incarnation uh, Delineates, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Hari Bol. Jai Rathiyatra. Hari Krishna. Jai Rathiyatra. Hari Bol. Thank you, sir.
Are there any other questions? Don't be shy. Pinky. Very well, namaste, sir. Namaste, so. sir. Sir, uh, I just want to uh, ask if, uh, like, when they're parading the, the deities outside, uh, is there a certain schedule for the stops? Or sometimes it just happened that, that the carts would just stop, like, you know, some, like, a miraculous thing or, you know, yeah, something um, like that? If you, you cannot imagine the, uh, the festivity of, of Ratayatra in India. Uh, I mean, if, if you take all the, 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 the biggest sports, uh, you know, the biggest uh, football uh, stadiums and baseball stadiums and soccer stadiums, and you, and you put all those people together in one stadium, uh, you know, that would be kind of like the feeling of, of being among all those people. There are thousands and thousands and thousands, even millions of people, all just crammed into the, the, the path of Lord Jagannath and the, and the, uh, the carts as they, as they come down the road. And as far as scheduled stops, I think that they do have like two or three scheduled stops along the road, but, but sometimes the, the crowd is just so heavy that they, they have to stop just to, just to wait until they can make it through the, the crowd and everything. And all the, all the Pujaris, which now we know that they're, they're all descendants of um, of the people that that uh, that originally were uh, you know devoted to Nilachal and everything the uh, the descendants of Vidyapati and and uh, and uh, the other uh, the other people that were involved in the finding of Lord Jagannath uh, they are spending their time. Uh, doing one of two things, either trying to keep people from climbing onto the cart and, you know, uh, protecting Lord Jagannath, Subhadra and Balaram, or uh, throwing uh, prashadam or sometimes like cloth that has been offered, like like scarves and stuff that has been offered or, or little trinkets that have been offered to the Lord, to the, to the crowd, to the waiting crowd. So it is... Uh, I just, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like, it's just like a sea of humanity. It's, it's like the, uh, uh, the Kumbh Mela all crammed into a small city, you know, of Jagannath Puri. So it's, uh, it's, it's really amazing. And I, I think that, you know, like you say, if, if, if they stop, you know, Usually, except there may be one or two, like I said, you know, plan stops. But generally speaking, if they stop, it's simply because Lord Jagannath is waiting for the the crowd to uh, to move aside so that he can he can move along. Okay. All right, though. It's an amazing, amazing experience. If you ever get a chance to go, you'll be. You will be amazed, and you probably, I know, I went to a, I didn't go to one of those, but I went to a, 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 an, an Independence Day celebration in Malaysia one time, where they have, everybody is, is crowded into this, into the, the, the central uh, uh, capital region of uh, Kuala Lumpur, and uh, you get that many people all just swarming around one little place and you begin to feel like, Oh my God, you know, how, how I, 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 I feel, I felt, I felt like I was going to get crushed. You know, you, you just, you just feel on the one hand, you feel so paranoid, but on the other hand, I think that if I were in Puri for the Rathiatra, I would be too busy, you know, feeling ecstasy, uh, for just for the, the 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 privilege of being there and seeing Lord Jagannath, that I I wouldn't care if I got crushed or not, you know. So uh, yeah, so yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. 
So thank you, Pinky. Are there any other questions? Anyone else? Hi, boss, sir. Yes, sir. I was watching. I was watching it live yesterday on the internet, actually. Cool. On the Disha, on the Disha. I think it's a Disha TV or something like that. And uh, wow. of course, there's not all the the um, there's all social distancing and all the COVID, you know, rules and regulations. So there wasn't the crowds and stuff like that they've had in previous, you know, pilgrimages yeah. and that. Yeah, but just to see the carts, them pulling the carts along, it's like, wow, it's like such a spectacle. It's amazing. I know. I went to the Rath Yatra in San Francisco back a long, long time ago when, when Prabhupada was there. Siddha Saroop and Bhaktivedanta were both there. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, you know, in San Francisco and I think in London, too, they build the carts to size. They build them just as big as they, as they have them in India. And it's just... Oh man, it's just amazing! They're really, like three temples. they're like three temples. Yeah. On, the, on the, they're, they're dragging along. Oh, they exactly. it's, it's totally amazing. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. cool. Hi, Bob. Thank you, Daryl. Namaste. Thank you for this. Thank you for the story, Hi, Bob. Next time, why don't you share uh, on Facebook where people can watch that? That would be cool. I, if I had known, I I might have you know. I might have thought of watching it. Wow, that that'd be. Uh, and these days, you can you can be almost anywhere on your computer or on your phone. So that's cool. Okay, any other questions, comments, thoughts, feelings? Haribo. Haribo. Who's that? Embed again? Okay. Yeah. Haribo. Why was this form uh, called Jagannath or Lord of the Universe? You'd have to ask him. <laughs> um, you know, he was he originally apparently he was Neela Chal, and then uh, and then uh, when this uh, when he was carved out of that one piece of wood by Vishwakarma, uh, he became known as Jagannath. And I I would uh, would imagine that this is the name given to uh, King Indrajumna in a dream or something like that, which was you know. But I, I, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. It, it's pure speculation on my part. But like I said, you, you'd have to ask Lord Chaka not that. <laughs> so, all right, Bo. Anything else? Anyone? Anyone at all? Nicholas, Sharni, Alan? Katrino, where have you been? Adi Leela, Dal, Dal Gelling. Namaste, Katrina. Haribo, sir. Haribo, Adi Leela Dasi. Namaste. So, um, yeah, if there's any other questions, if not, we'll give a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Oh, yes, Pinky, you have another question. Just in time. Uh, the one who carved the, the deities is Anantam Maharan, Maharana. Is, is that Vishvakarma, Vishvakarma sir? What, uh, like the story said that I read, uh, the, the uh, understanding is that the old man who He's appeared that. to King Indra Jumna and said, you know, I will, I will carve this uh this this holy piece of wood that you found in the in the river according to Jagannath, according to indra Chal, Neela Chal's instructions uh that he was vishwakarma that he was vishwakarma in disguise so he's like an incarnation of krishna sir yes yes he's uh, like the uh the, the architectural the incarnation of krishna or something like that okay. yeah Okay. So the All same right, architect in the heavenly planets. That yes. Is the is the one? Oh, okay. Yes. Very well. Thank you so much. Very well. Very right, well. Okay. We have another ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Sharni. Yes. All right, well. Very well. That's a beautiful background you've got there. What is that? The background. Yes, 
Yes, is, sir. It's like is, a temple with, a, uh, with Lord Jagannath and Krishna. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you, sir. Um, I just have a question, sir. Uh, what's the relevance of the story in our present time? Well, the relevance of Lord Jagannath is always relevant. I mean, in our present time, <laughs> you know, uh, <sighs> things are so screwy right now in this Kali Yuga. You know, Jagannath is very, very, uh, I mean, solid. You know, I mean, he's just like there. And uh, in terms of relevance, the Lord, worship of the Lord, worship of Krishna. I mean, this is, this is a time, even in Kali Yuga, because of the influence of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was a great, great worshiper of Lord Jagannath. But because of his munificence, mercy, and, and influence, we have this opportunity. We can see the world splitting apart into people who worship Maya and people who worship Krishna, whether, whether they call themselves Christians or Muslims or, or whatever have you, or whether they call themselves white supremacists or, or uh, you know, whatever name, uh, just materialists and, and business people that have no conscience and so forth. We see this split happening before our very eyes. And it's very interesting to me to look at the world from my perspective here in the Philippines, where you look out and you see all this stuff going on and you just, you just, you just amazed. I'm just amazed, you know, people like Tulsi um, are, are uniting uh, devotees under, you know, whatever religion they call themselves. And they're, they're all uniting together uh, she is helping to to bring that together, and and the, so there are so many. Um, there are basically two camps, and uh, Lord Jagannath is you know uh, the overlord of of the one camp that <laughs> the people who worship Krishna, uh, worship God, worship Vishnu, and uh, and you know Maya is uh, the overlord of of the other camp, as it were. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, relevance, God is never, never not relevant. So, you know, it, it, it is through worship of, of Vishnu, through worship of Krishna, uh, by any name, and through the glorification of the Lord and through uh, the uh, mercy of the Lord that we draw breath that we have food, that we have, uh, you know, as, 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 as much as man tries to destroy everything that God has created, nevertheless, uh, God keeps giving, uh, you know, I mean, in the Satya Yuga, it's described that there are very few people. You know, it's not like bazillions of people like now that where the earth is so crowded that, that she's overburdened and, you know, she has to create something like COVID in order to get rid of a, a bunch of people um, to, to, to lessen the burden. But, you know, so what happens between the end of Kali Yuga and the beginning of Satya Yuga? You know, the, the uh, Kalki comes and, and, and destroys all the materialists, which is basically like 98% of the, of the people on the planet. And so you're left for the Satya Yuga, you're left with another 2% of the population. So God is always relevant in so many ways, in every way, the glory for glorification of God, stories about God, chanting the name of God, glorifying God. This never ever becomes irrelevant. No matter what's going on in the world, you know, uh, when uh, we, we were just talking uh, last week about, the, uh, the apartment building that fell in Florida. You know, if you saw the pictures, I mean, the people are, it's 1.30 in the morning. People are sitting and lying in bed, they're asleep, and all of a sudden they're dead. Just like that. I mean, without, you know, so the, the relevance is that we should try, you know, to be thinking of Krishna, to be thinking of God, to be, 
to be dreaming about God. We, we can't maybe necessarily, you know, that's up to him, but, but we want God to be the center of our lives in every moment possible because you never know when a building's going to fall on you. You know, you, you never know. Uh, death can come at any moment, and you want to be Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. You want to be Jagannath, Jagannath, Jagannath. You want to be with him when that happens, regardless. He's always relevant. Does that yes, answer sir. your question? Yes, sir. And another thing, sir, yeah. um, um, the because the the king didn't wait that much uh what's the what is also the um the presence in our present situation sir what does it convey be patient you notice you notice it's always it's always the wife that's like no no come on it's been days he said 21 days but we haven't heard anything how do you know he's even in there he's probably taking your money and gone to the forest already you don't know you've got to open it up and see what's going on you know it's just it's just the nature of men and women you know the nature of marriage the nature of all these things that that we we become impatient we we don't we don't you know we we even 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 Krishna instructs him in a dream to do it this way, to, you know, to, to wait the 21 days, you know, 14 days. And it's like, that's too much. That's all I can stand. I got to open the door, you know? So uh, uh, it's, it's these, these wonderful histories and stories that we, that we, um, that we uh, uh, hear and, and recite from the Vedas. They are, they, they just, they reflect human nature in so many amazing ways. You know, I mean, you just, you read these stories, you think, oh, I know somebody like that, or I felt that way, or, you know, I've seen something like that happen all the time. You know, it's just, it, it amazes me. It's just, it's just always very, uh, very cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> be patient. <laughs> Harry Bow. Very much, sir. Harry Bow. Any other questions, comments, or thoughts? Shall I start the countdown again? Ten. Harry Bow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. I've, I, I've heard from that. Uh, you might be thinking that uh, since the king didn't wait for the twenty-one days. You might be thinking that the form of uh, Daganat is not, uh, that is his form. That is, you might think that it's not finished, but it is actually that form, his form. It's explained in the story that this is, this is Jagannath's plan. This is, this is his, uh, the, the fact that, that uh, the queen couldn't wait and, and all this stuff, you know, the 14 days versus the 21 days, you know, this, this seems like, like, yeah, some some people might say, well, you know, it's probably they look like that because, you know, he never finished, uh, you know, carving. Um, but, you know, this uh, this was all this whole pastime and everything of Jagannath, Subhadra and Balaram and everything. This is all all part of Jagannath, all part of Vishnu's plan, all part of Krishna's plan. You're right. You're right. I'm bet. Thank you. <laughs> It's not, it's not like they're, you know, they're, they're like only half carved or anything like that. No, that's not the case. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, quickly, four, almost done. Three, two, one. Haribo! 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 Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Hare Krishna. Haribo, namaste. Haribo, Narayan Dasi. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. And thank you for being with us, sharing this uh, wonderful story of Lord Jagannath. It's really amazing, and 
your spirit association. I know. Accept my humble obeisance, sir, and everyone, please accept my humble obeisance. Thank you so much for joining us and staying online. <laughs>
horrible. Thank you so much. <laughs> and family, and Dimitri family, thank you so much. Haribo! Haribo, Krishna! Haribo, Krishna. Haribo, you guys. Haribo, what's that? Haribo! All right, thank you so much for the sweet chanting in your precious time. All glories to Lord Jagannath. All glories to Nita Gorge. Jaya Jaya Guru Dev. Thank you. Namaste. Haribol. Haribol.